Yeah, hello guys. Hi, this is Rishabh from New Tech Dojo. Today I have with me Frank King. Frank uh, is an amazing gentleman. He spent nine years on Amazon and IMDb developing and managing technology that automatically delivers product and movie recommendations to hundreds of millions of customers. I guess Frank would be a stalwart for machine learning in those age. He holds uh, 17 issued patents in the field of distributed computing, data mining, and machine learning. In 2012, Frank started his company Sundog Software, which focuses on virtual reality environment technology and teaching others about machine learning. Frank, thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you. Right. So, so Frank, we'll start with a pretty basic stuff. Can you help the viewers understand what is deep learning? Uh, in a really layman term. Yeah, I mean, uh, deep learning is an exciting technology that basically takes inspiration from how the human brain works to build systems that can automatically learn how to perform very specific tasks inside a computer. Uh, so, for example, you know, a self-driving car will use deep learning networks to try to figure out, is that a stop sign on the side of the road or a yield sign or something else? It can do that sort of image classification using techniques that are very similar to what's going on inside of your head. So it's basically taking software systems that are inspired by the anatomy of human brains and applying that to allowing machines to learn how to do things in the real world. Right. And what are the possibilities of deep learning and what all can you do? Is deep learning same as machine learning? Uh, it's a subset of machine learning. So machine learning is a broader term that contains, you know, multiple different approaches to training systems to learn how to do different things. Uh, deep learning, though, is sort of a... It's definitely the hottest field of machine learning, the, the, the most recent one. And, you know, it's, some companies like Google, for example, are using deep learning for all machine learning tasks now because it is such a general purpose tool. Mm -hmm. So um, does that answer your question? I, I think no, it does. No, my question was, what can you do with deep learning? I mean, oh, what can you do with it? Um, yeah, there's a wide variety of things you can use it for. Um, so, you know, we talked a little bit about self-driving cars and image classification. That's a popular application of it. But there's other things you can do as well. Uh, machine translation is an example of that as well. Uh, you can actually train a system how to learn a new language and actually try to predict sequences of words in a sentence from one language to another. Uh, you can use it for sentiment analysis, trying to learn whether or not a uh, given movie review is positive or negative, for example. Uh, you can use it for handwriting recognition. That's a very common example where you can just take uh, handwritten letters and use deep learning networks to try to figure out is that scribble an A or a B or a C or something else. Like, uh, like, and, the, um, like the OCR notes, the optical images? Yeah, exactly. So it's a new way of doing that. It's a, it's a very broad technology that can be applied to pretty much any machine learning problem you can think of these days. Uh, when you were at Amazon and IMDb, did you use deep learning algorithms or did you develop machine learning algorithms for, for recommendation engines? Using deep learning for recommender systems is a relatively new thing that just happened in the past couple of years, really. So when I was at Amazon, we did not use deep learning for that sort of a thing. We used um, some published techniques that are pretty widely accessible, like item-based collaborative filtering, which is a more straightforward approach. Uh, but today, companies like YouTube and Netflix are using deep learning for uh, recommendations, and so is Amazon as well. They recently open sourced a tool called Amazon Destiny, that's D-S-S-T-N-E, okay. uh, that actually allows you to run their systems on your own recommender engine problems. And it's, it works really well. Um, I don't want to go too much into the weeds, but there's actually some very uh, specific challenges to using deep learning networks on recommender systems that they've kind of cracked the nut on. Um, anyway, they figured it out. <laughs> it has to do with data <laughs> sparsity, but I don't want to get into that level right now. Right. And if, if suppose I'm a new learner and if I, if I get on with learning, uh, deep learning algorithms, uh, where would I go hunting for such courses or such books? Where, where, where would, what would you recommend? Well, the good news is that uh, it's a very hot topic and there's a lot of easily accessible uh, resources for you to learn from. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, there are some prerequisites that we can talk about later that you want to get under your belt first before you tackle deep learning. Uh, but when you're ready for it, uh, there's lots of online courses out there that you can start with, um, including mine, shameless plug. So if you go to <laughs> udemy.com, you'll find my... Uh, what is it? Uh, Data Science, Deep Learning, and Machine Learning with Python course, and that gives you a good introduction. And actually, if you just head to YouTube, I have a free series on deep learning there as well. It's like a three-hour course that actually walks you through a bunch of hands-on examples, and it's totally free. So just look for uh, Sundog Education on YouTube, and you'll find that there. Great. Viewers, we have a link on the description where you can find Sundog Education Udemy course and his free YouTube uh, playlist. 
Yeah, we can definitely uh, add it there. And uh, if you just go to sundog-education.com, you'll find a sign-up link for it there as well. Um, it depends on the employer, right? I mean, a lot of employers really just care about what you can do more so than where you learned it. So, um, you know, it's still possible to be self-taught and find a job in this field if you can find a, the right employer. You know, I mean, you're definitely okay. going to have a much easier time of it if you have a master's degree from Stanford in the field and you've done some stuff in the real world. I mean, you can pretty much write your own ticket at that point. Uh, but, you know, employers care a lot more about what you can do as opposed to how you learned it or where you went to school or what courses you took. You know, a lot of people can take a course but have a hard time translating that into actual practical applications. Uh, so my advice to everyone, regardless of how you're learning this stuff, is to don't stop at just learning it. Go out and do some freelance work, you know, do some Kaggle challenges, uh, you know, take whatever opportunities you can, work on open source projects that are related to the field. Just have stuff that you can point to that's in the real world that you worked on in the field of deep learning, and that will increase your odds of getting a job in the field by orders of magnitude. Right. So it could be anything from doing a Coursera course or taking a Udemy course from Sundog and trying their own projects and putting up on your resumes. Yeah, those projects are going to be a lot more important than uh, than your degree. I mean, it definitely it depends on the employer. Again, you know, some employers are really hung up on your academic credentials. Some are not. Um, but any employer is going to care a lot more about what you've done as opposed to where you learned it. All right. And what are the prerequisites? Who do you think somebody should know Python R or say a bit of statistics? Yeah, I mean, Python seems to be the hot uh, language these days for this sort of a thing. Um, okay. A lot of people are kind of getting into the field learning MATLAB and Octave, and I don't think that's really aligned with where things are going right now. Uh, Python seems to be where it's at. Um, that's what TensorFlow is developed for, and that's kind of like the leading tool for developing these things right now. Uh, so if you had to pick one language right now, I'd say Python. Okay. Um, and is it possible for you to show a hands-on experiment of, for deep learning on your screen? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can just refer you to my online course there. Um, I don't have anything loaded up and handy, ready to show you right now. But uh, throughout my the free course that I talked about on YouTube, there's a bunch of hands-on examples there that you can look at, and they're just on YouTube for you to look at. Okay. Uh, some of the things we do include uh, doing handwriting recognition, like we talked about, in a couple of different ways. Right. Uh, we do sentiment analysis to try to figure out if movie reviews on IMDb are positive or negative. We also use machine learning and deep learning to figure out, um, try to predict pol politicians' political parties just based on their voting history. Yeah. And finally, we wrap it up with an exercise of trying to classify mammogram results, where if we have data about the size of tumors that were detected inside uh, inside of a woman's breast, you can actually try to classify those using deep learning right. as being benign or malignant. And it actually works. It's kind of exciting. Wow. Uh, science is taking us, deep learning is actually taking us much ahead in life, actually. Well, I hope so. It's kind of at a, uh, at a turning point right now where, you know, it's, almost good enough to be really exciting but it's not quite there yet so i think the uh, the coming year is going to be very exciting and seeing how these things develop uh self-driving cars will probably be the next big thing that we see coming out of this and that's an example of where deep learning isn't quite there yet but it's really really close so um you see it'll any, be exciting to see that come you, you see any future for deep learning i mean what what's next after deep learning well, you know, right now, deep learning is really only suitable for very narrow tasks. You know, like, uh, is this a uh, is this handwritten number a one or a two? Um, is this sign that I see in this image a stop sign or something else? Um, is this somebody's face or somebody else's face? So kind of the, the next stage in evolution is more general purpose AI systems that can handle a broader uh, variety of situations. So... And by narrow, I also mean they need to work under tightly controlled conditions where you have a lot of control over the inputs coming in and you make sure that data is really clean and normalized. Right. Uh, take, for example, the self-driving car case I was talking about. Yeah. That's an example where in a laboratory setting or controlled conditions, it works really well. But you put a self-driving car out in the real world where you have, you know, idiots that are cutting you off with no notice and other unexpected things, it doesn't go well, right? So right. Um, as these uh, systems evolve to become more complex and be able to handle more general situations, uh, that's where I see things going next. And that's one of what's going to lead to deep learning really taking a more prominent role in the real world as opposed to, you know, laboratory conditions. Right, right. And, and, when, I, and when I look at this assistant, the voice control assistant like Siri or the, the Android one, the, 
uh, do these applications use deep learning techniques or is it still machine learning? Um, I don't have firsthand knowledge of how those are working under the hood, but uh, you certainly could use deep learning for that. Uh, just like you can use it for handwriting recognition, you can use it for voice recognition. So instead of a uh, you know array of pixels that indicate an image that was drawn, it's just a waveform instead in that case, right? So uh, I, I'd be... I would be very, very, very surprised if Google was not using deep learning for, for that because <laughs> they use deep learning for everything. That's kind of a mandate within Google. All right. And one last question. Who's your guru for deep learning? I mean, who do you worship? Who do I worship? Uh, <laughs> that's a tough one. There, there aren't a whole lot of like prominent experts in the field, honestly, because the, the people that really know this stuff are, you know, working in industry and, you know, under very tight NDAs and whatnot. So, um, there's no one person I would really point to as inspiration. I, I take more inspiration from the material itself. It's just really exciting to sort of figure out how this stuff really works and the insight that it can give you into how your own brain works and how your own consciousness works. It's pretty mind-blowing stuff. Mm. And what learning part would you recommend our learners if, if they are from absolute zero, maybe they just know one or two computer science languages, what would you recommend them as a learning part? Well, I would start by learning Python, uh, if you're not already, already familiar with it, you know, at least uh, get a um, working knowledge of how Python code works and is structured and how to write good Python code. Uh, from there, you know, it's going to be, you're going to need to have some fundamentals in linear algebra. Um, a lot of deep learning involves sort of a fundamental knowledge of how to take matrices and multiply them together and add in vectors and things like that. Um, there are higher level APIs that let you not think about those details, but it definitely will be helpful if you do understand what's going on under the hood there. Um, I would say, you know, some background in computer algorithms will be helpful. Um, if you're totally new to computer science, you're going to have a really hard time figuring out how neural networks work because fundamentally it's just, you know, an algorithm, pretty simple algorithm, but it's still an algorithm. And once you're at that point, uh, yeah, go ahead and try learning uh, deep learning. Uh, like I said, there's a bunch of online courses, uh, that you can just look at and take. There are plenty of courses offered by various schools throughout the the world if you want a more formal educational path. Mm -hmm. um, but the prerequisite is really linear algebra, Python, and uh, computer algorithms. Got it. Thanks. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for taking our time. Uh, my friends, uh, I, I hope you got a lot of it from, from Frank's uh, talk. Uh, if you have more questions, just put down in your comments, and we'll come back with the next episode. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.